As we come back, I want you to imagine if you had a leasey bag. Is it a bag? Pouch? Envelope. Yeah, envelope. Sorry. But in that envelope was a lottery ticket. And that lottery ticket has the winning numbers every time. So I think it's like 100 billion or 100, half a billion or something like that. But imagine that lottery ticket is, is there, you win it, but you, have to, you, you can't claim it for yourself. You have to share it. Would you, what would you do with that leasey pouch envelope? Would you show it to other people? Would you keep it for yourself and like, oh, I don't, I don't know, I, I, I'm just gonna hide it or, you know? No, you would like, to claim it, I'm gonna go and share it with as many people as I can. Um, Cause that's the, that's the way, it's such a, such a great thing, I want to spread it out and, and for other people to know so that they can also have this lottery um, for us so that's a, I don't know that's a crude way of gospel but in Romans 1 <laughs> it talks about the gospel where we have this good news it's like this um, it's like we have the this this good news that we often just keep it to ourselves and we don't share it but Paul he says you know I live for this this is what I'm about and I share this good news, this gospel of one um, is about God. And all you have to do is to share what God's word says. And it's about, um, it's about his word and it's, it points to Jesus. So let's turn to Romans 1 and we'll read again from 1 to 7. And this is what we're about too. We're about the gospel and that we could uh, live for him and uh, live and point to him. So let's just all stand. And I invite you to, let's just all read together, I, whatever version you have, I have an ASB, but just read together. It has a way to verbalize that we are about this as well. So let's read together. Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through the prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, who was born of a descendant of David according to the flesh, who was declared the son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead, according to the spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles, for his name's sake, among whom you also are the call of Jesus Christ. To all who are beloved of God in Rome, called as saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. So once again, let's turn our heart to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for seeking us. Thank you for opening up for us a part the part to seek you through your word. So now that we have the word in our hands, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will take that into our heart. Bring us the spirit of obedience. Give us the attentive ears to hear, a clear mind to understand, and a prayer in our heart to say, we want to see you, Lord, in your word and obey you. So help us, Lord. We thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. But we have the uh, review, so I won't do it myself. I think that's saved like half an hour. So I just want to go straight into the outline. As you see in the outline, we have last time we're talking about the message of the gospel. And we covered the gospel is God's message. And we said that it is the gospel of God. It's the good news from God. Uh, it is uh, of God. He is the uh, author. He is the originator. Uh, he, uh, he has uh, uh, the message in the divine origin of his own nature. 
uh, it is not human work and so the things that he has to say for us he has said so through his prophets and through the written text and the content is fixed so we we just proclaim uh, his message as it is given to us and so that's uh, a real challenge for us as we receive the word to live it through but also that we need to understand the word uh, and the message of the gospel clearly and, and, and precisely and adequately so that we can uh, apply that into our life but also as we share the gospel we want to also to reflect uh, his truth and not to interject our own imagination or our own tendency or our own uh, will a way into that uh, and uh, there's a comfort in that for us as well because uh, we don't have to come up with something to persuade the hearts of men we don't have to do something uh, uh, to try to change man because uh, that's the work of the Holy Spirit uh, our work is to proclaim the gospel is to share the gospel and to live the gospel and now uh, let's move to this, the next point and that is uh, the message of the gospel uh, is in God's word is in God's word <coughs> Uh, now it's, it's very important to, to notice uh, to note this as we go back uh, and look at the verse 1 and 2 Paul a bond servant of Christ Jesus called as an apostle set apart for the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture so we talk about Paul uh, uh, being the bond servant we talk about his uh, duty call and sent out as an apostle uh, we cover the, the part that as uh, Paul, as well as uh, each one of us, we are set apart and set apart for the gospel of God. And now well, Paul defined what the gospel of God is. He said, which, the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture. So the gospel is God's word uh, and is in God's word. Uh, Paul said that it is from God, it's of God. It comes uh, directly from him. And we find it in the Holy Scriptures. That is uh, given to the Holy Prophets uh, and now uh, given to us through the written uh, form in the Holy Scripture. And this is very important truth so that we can see the unity uh, of Scripture from the Prophets to the Apostle as the foundation of God's truth uh, uh, to the Church and through, uh, for each one of us. Uh, <coughs> And it is uh, also uh, the, uh, the, uh, the message of salvation that is given beforehand. So it is not a reaction of God to, to, to the sin of the world and to the failure of Israel or even of us that he come up with a different plan. It is in his heart uh, from eternity to save. It is in his heart to save in this way and this is the truth of God. So, so so we, we know that, uh, that it's not a divine afterthought, but it is the divine plan from eternity. And then we, we, we come to understand that it is, uh, it is God's promise beforehand. So, so it is a, a, a consistent plan of God that now present, uh, that God revealed to us in His Word. So in order to understand His plan that it has from the beginning, we need to come to the, the means of grace, which is His Word, where he revealed uh, this plan to us. And, and we know that from the time uh, the, that uh, when Adam and Eve uh, sinned uh, in the fall uh, in the Garden of Eden, uh, that's uh, the promise in uh, Genesis uh, verse 15 uh, that, uh, that the seed of the woman, from the seed of the woman will come the, the Redeemer. He will overcome uh, Satan uh, but he will be uh, uh, also in, in the fight with Satan and he will uh, uh, bite his heel. Uh, and when we see that picture of, of God working out or revealing his salvation plan in many ways. Uh, even uh, when he uh, sacrificed the, the animals to, uh, to make clothes for Adam and Eve. Uh, uh, and when he uh, received the sacrifice from Abel. Uh, or, or when he put the family of Noah on the on the ark and saved them through the flood, um, we we see we, we see the uh, the picture of, of a sacrifice of a substitute uh, uh, that be, begin to emerge in, uh, uh, in in the picture, and and through the prophets uh, he begin to explain that in in the, uh, the 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 call of Abraham 
in the separation out of Israel, uh, in the messages uh, of salvation, of uh, covenants, uh, that God is begin, uh, has begun to reveal this, this plan, this salvation plan that he promised beforehand. And in Hebrew chapter 1, verse uh, 1 and 2, he kind of summed that up together, and he said that in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So, so everything is now uh, uh, come together uh, when Jesus, uh, God's son, uh, entered into the world and, pre and present Christ. Uh, the word became flesh, dwell among us, explaining the Father to us. And, 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 and that is uh, the, 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 the picture here. That, uh, that God has promised beforehand a, a, a plan of salvation, that now he is proclaiming that through his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and, and we can make a, 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 a note, a, a two notes at least, that the gospel of God is the fulfillment of uh, Old Testament promises. It is not something new that, you know, pop up in, in the middle of the scene. It is something that, uh, that God has revealed in the beginning, he has uh, uh, opened it up in the scripture of the Old Testament. And the God of the Old Testament is the same as the God of the New Testament. What he was preparing in the, in the Old uh, Testament or promising in the Old Testament, now he has fulfilled in the coming of Christ. Uh, and so the, the gospel has now come to a conclusion or a summation as far as the truth revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we also note that, you know, God keeps His promises. Uh, hundreds of years uh, has gone by, uh, and the Jews many, many times have wondered if the Messiah will ever come. Uh, they go through many suffering, many, uh, you know, uh, changes. Uh, but then God acted, and the promise was fulfilled. Uh, so, even in this statement that He promised beforehand, now He has fulfilled the promise that we know that God can be trusted. Uh, at times, uh, it may look like he, you know, he's uh, not, uh, he has forgotten, or, or we don't feel that uh, that he he is uh, uh, doing the the work that that he promised. But he he never forgets. God never forgets. Uh, uh, the the uh, the one point of verse two here is not that it is a statement of content of the gospel only, but it's also the reason for which we need to believe. We can see that God has promised Christ for centuries before he came. And that, in fact, in many details he has fulfilled by the promises. Uh, and so we put faith in the promises of God in the, in, in, uh, in the, uh, in the Bible because he always fulfilled his word. Uh, and so now uh, uh, he has uh, given us more details in what he has promised uh, through the prophets and uh, and it is uh, in the in in the scripture that we find and so paul is saying that uh, that in order to 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 understand the gospel of god uh, you look into what he has given in in the holy scripture uh, and and we see paul doing that uh, even in the book of, of roman we will find out as we go into the details when he's talking about uh, faith he, uh, he uh, gave an example in the life of Abraham. When he talking about the, the relationship between law and grace, uh, he uh, quoted Moses, Hosea, Isaiah, David. Uh, he brought out the scripture from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, through uh, the, the historical books, uh, through uh, the major prophets like Jeremiah, Isaiah, uh, to the minor prophets like Malachi, uh, uh, he quote Daniel. I mean, uh, what Paul is try is doing when he presents the gospel, he presents the word of God. He presents the scripture, uh, and and over and over again he come back to the authority of scripture as proof of God's uh, 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 revelation and his authority that is directly from God. And so we can say that when when Paul presents the gospel. He presents the word of Scripture. Now, this is extremely important in, in our time because uh, we somehow separate out, you know, Scripture as something we use in order, in order to say, uh, to, to support the things that we want to say. Paul is, not, uh, Paul is not doing that. Paul's presentation of the gospel is a biblical presentation. 
He constantly appeals to scriptural authority to present the gospel. He speaks from the gospel. Uh, he quotes scripture. He explains scripture. He, he paints the picture and delivers the message using the scripture. Uh, and, and so that's, that's why he, you know, he, he, uh, he uh, defined the gospel of God is what God has promised beforehand and can be found in scripture by the words of the prophets. <laughs> and so how do you understand the scripture? Uh, how do you understand the gospel? You come to the word of God, the scripture, uh, the Bible. How do you present uh, the gospel? You present it from scripture uh, and, uh, and, and uh, bring people to the word of God. You know, I, I don't know uh, if, if you uh, catch the, uh, the presentation that I did for, from the trip about you know, going to this hut in the middle of the jackfruit uh, farm. And, and this man said, I know nothing. I have never heard the gospel. Somebody gave me this box and I listened to it. I didn't understand a thing from the beginning, but I keep listening and it began to make sense. And, and, and just from the word uh, of scripture, he was brought into faith and, and, and transformed and, uh, and made new. Uh, and the evidence is, uh, is there for all to see. So, so the presentation of the gospel is not something that we come up with, uh, try to persuade men, try to bring them to, uh, to, to God by our, by, by our uh, you know, cleverness of speech and of, of, our eloquence or our proof. We present the gospel. Uh, we present the word of God. And, and, and that is why uh, preaching and teaching the scripture is so serious and so needful in our time and our life together. Uh, so, uh, for example, we are reading the word, the, the word of Paul writing uh, uh, to uh, the church in, in, Roman, uh, in Rome. Uh, that's uh, the letter uh, of Paul to the Romans. But we don't read that as the word of Paul. We read that this as the word of God. We, we say this is scripture and, and this is God speaking through the pen of Paul and through the, the writing of Paul. Not, mere, not merely the word of man because, because the, the word of God is promised given through the prophets, through the apostle, inspired by God and the gospel is unfolded and preserved uh, for us in the writings of, uh, of the apostles and of the prophets. And so this is what we believe and it makes a huge difference. It's not like something that we can we use to strengthen our argument or, or our position or our, our presentation. We come and say, uh, you want to know God. You want to know what God's uh, plans is for you. Uh, here is the word of God. And, and so we come to, uh, we present the scripture. And so the, the point here, as I want to emphasize, that, and that is the gospel is in the word. The gospel is in the scripture, is in the Bible. Uh, we proclaim the gospel through what is written. Uh, we, we don't pro proclaim this from uh, new things or new story. Uh, you know, I, I, I get uh, this email, uh, Bible study from movie. I don't know if you get it or not. Uh, there's, there's an outfit that uh, go see the movie and then they will use the movie uh, as the basis of presenting the uh, presenting lesson uh, from God, and they think it's more relevant. People may respond to that more. Well, they may respond to that more, but they're not responding to the gospel, and they're not responding to God and God's spirit. They, we will try to, to use the cleverness of man, but here Paul is saying, you don't do that. The gospel of God is in the Holy Scripture. Now, he is very uh, adamant about that, and, and so uh, we can see his attitude here in uh, 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 15. If you would turn there, we will see that what he insists for us to understand. So, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sin according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scripture, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Paul said, I'm preaching uh, to you the, uh, the gospel of God, and, 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 and this is what you have received. 
you, you receive the gospel that I deliver to you, and you are saved by this gospel, and this gospel is in the word of God, and so you must hold fast to it, because that's what I, de I deliver to you. I deliver to you the, the uh, first important, of highest priority, uh, the, 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 the gospel that Christ died for you, and how do I get that? According to scripture. Uh, I declare to you that he was raised on the third day. How do we know that? According to scripture. How do we know that he has, has appeared to, to the, the twelve and, and to, uh, to other witnesses? According to the scripture. And, and, uh, and so according to scripture, according to scripture is what we say and is what we do and is what we believe. And I think it's fundamental for the church to come back to this point. Fundamental for us to de develop this conviction that if we want to know anything about God, we come to Scripture. But more than that, if we want others to know God, we present to them the Scripture. Uh, and, and, and therefore, our life is a life of people of the Word. We, we learn the Word, we talk the Word, we present the Word. In Acts chapter 26, when Paul uh, was uh, given a defense of, uh, of what God called him to do, um, he said something very, very fundamental. So in uh, uh, Acts 26, verse 22 to 23, he was confronted by, by persecution. Uh, <coughs> and, so, and so he said this, So having obtained help from God, I stand to this day testifying, both to small and great, started uh, stating nothing but what the prophets and Moses said was going to take place, that the Christ was going to suffer, and that by reason of his resurrection from the dead, he would be the first to proclaim light both to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Paul is saying that, you know, uh, people are persecuting me, but what do I do? I proclaim to them nothing. I say nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses has said. So he said that I, 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 I proclaim the gospel. I proclaim the word of God. I did not present to them anything else besides uh, the scripture. Nothing outside the scripture. Um, and so that's why we, we, we say it is uh, very important to say that the presentation of the gospel is the presentation of the word. It is the word that is inspired by God. It is the word that displays and embodies the power of God. Uh, and it is the word that will go forth and will not return empty. It is the word that will accomplish the work of God and the plan of God. Uh, and, and, and uh, I might belabor this point a little bit more, uh, but, uh, but uh, the reason why we have to be concerned about this uh, very uh, important truth is because the attitude of the church regarding the Bible. Uh, you, you, you would think the church uh, is the place where the Bible is honored. Uh, well, we do give lip service to the Bible. We, we do uh, say, you know, but... But if, if you take the attitude of the people, you know, there's a resistance to learning scripture. Uh, learning scripture again, going through this book again, or, uh, verse by verse again. You know, the, 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 as if that we have enough scripture. And then we have this fear uh, that if when we invite friends, and if we invite friends to, to the church, and all we talk about is scripture, they would not understand. Uh, and they would reject. Uh, well... We are right in one way that uh, natural man won't like scripture because uh, natural man cannot understand scripture. They understand the words, the reasoning, and all these things, but they will not under understand scripture. But natural man is not saved by anything else but the truth in scripture. And so you present the scripture as, as the gospel and, and the Holy Spirit will take the word of God and make uh, his work of grace uh, in the hearts of, of those uh, uh, that belong to him and they will respond they will be unable to respond but the means is the word of God and, and so Paul is very clear on that he said the, the gospel of God which is defined as uh, the, what's given through the prophets meaning it has been written uh, in the form of holy scripture and that's what you, you use now let me uh, uh, bring out another fact here that, uh, that is uh, prevalent in, in our time, and that is 
the, uh, the persuasion of uh, miracles, uh, miraculous power. There, there, there is a tendency, or not to tendency, there's a movement in our time to say that uh, the, the way uh, we uh, bring people to Christ is to demonstrate His power through healings, uh, through, uh, you know, uh, 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 casting out demons, healing services. Uh, the, uh, the movement is called Power Evangelism, uh, or if you read more of that, it is called the Third Wave Movement. And it is, it is uh, er everywhere in, in town. Uh, the power of evangelism is evangelism, they say, is uh, undergirded by supernatural uh, demonstrations. Uh, it said that uh, it was the miracles that far exceed the preaching of the word in evangelistic effectiveness. So, so if you can show power, if, if you can gather people and bring them to a meeting, where they see healings uh, happen, when they see, you know, people uh, give testimony that I was sick and now I am well, uh, I was a cripple and somebody lay hand on me and now I can walk. Uh, if, if you show that and you give proof of that, then people will come to believe. Well, what do they believe? They believe in, in power, they are not believing in the gospel. And, and even so, the power is, uh, is, uh, is a dangerous uh, fake in, in, in many, many ways. Uh, and it is very, 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 very dangerous uh, in, in that way uh, because it, it turned our heart away from the Word of God and the truth of God uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the visible, to the experience. We, we take away the authority from Scripture and transfer that to personal experience. And, and, and so we have to watch out for this, you know, even in our uh, uh, time of media now, uh, we are uh, turning to South by to video clips, and to give the experience of man, the testimony of man, uh, in place of the presentation of the truth of, of the gospel, as the main means to persuade uh, or to communicate the truth. Uh, that's great danger in that. There's a place for testimony as confirmation of what the Word is proclaiming, but it's, it's not the means of, of presentation. Why? Because Romans uh, 10, uh, 17 said that faith comes by hearing the message, and the message is heard through the Word of Christ. It is, faith comes not by seeing uh, dances on stage. Faith doesn't come by hearing songs. I mean, it can invoke emotions, it can prepare the hearts, but by itself it does not communicate. It does, it's not the, 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 the means uh, uh, unless it communicates the message of the Word of, uh, of Christ. And, and, and if, uh, and if you, you think that, uh, that man will need a dem demonstration of power in order to be persuaded of the truth, uh, turn with me to Luke chapter uh, Luke chapter 16. Uh, Luke chapter 16 is uh, is something very instructive in terms of evangelism, in terms of uh, of our own need, our, our own tendency to, to, to run after the spectacular, uh, to to say that we need more than the word uh, to, to to bring people to faith. Uh, so here uh, is the word of Jesus Himself saying that uh, you have to use the scripture because nothing else will, will be used by, by God to bring man to faith. Now the story is, uh, is uh, a familiar story, the, the story of the rich man and Lazarus, uh, the beggar Lazarus. And you, you remember uh, the story, you know, they, uh, the, Lazarus is a, is a poor uh, beggar uh, sitting at the gate uh, of the rich man and the rich man, uh, you know, live in, in luxury and everything, and both die. And they go to hell, and they, they, they go to their perspectives, and the, 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 the rich man go to hell. And so let me start in, uh, <coughs> in verse 24. Uh, he being, uh, being the rich man saying, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool up my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your life you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus' bad things, but now he's been comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you there's a great chasm fixed, 
so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able and that none may cross over from there to, to, to us. So he said that what, what, what you decided in life, how you live in your life, will, be, uh, determine, uh, will determine your eternity. There's nothing can be done afterwards. Uh, but then the rich man said, But then I beg you, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, in order that, they may, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. So please send Lazarus back to, uh, to, to, to talk to my, my family, so that they don't end up in hell like myself. Verse 29. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. They have the Word of God. They have the Old Testament. Let, let them read the Old Testament. But he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. No, if you can raise the dead, if you can show power, it, it, then they will be persuaded. But Abraham said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. See, the, 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 greatest, uh, the, the greatest miracle if, if, uh, if, uh, that can be performed is to raise people from the dead. And here Jesus is saying through this uh, story that even if the greatest power can be on display, it will not persuade man to come to the gospel and be saved. So, so, so the thing is, they have, the, the, uh, they have proof Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. This is uh, the instruction for us to present the gospel to unbelievers. How do we present uh, the gospel to unbelievers? <coughs> Presenting the word of God. Uh, but we say no, if we just invite them to come and, and, and do a Bible study, nobody's going to come and nobody's going to uh, uh, respond to that. We must do this and do that and be more attractive. And, we, uh, and, and, and Jesus said, if they do not respond to the word, they won't respond to anything. And I think, I think as a church together, we must come to this conviction. Because I, I, have, seen, I have seen even rejection in, in our own church about preaching, about teaching the word, about learning uh, scripture. They say, how can that be coming from people who should know better? That we, we live and die on the word of God. And, and, and our, our everything depends on the word of God. So... Where's the gospel? How do we understand the gospel? How do we present the gospel? Where's the power of the gospel come from? From the Bible, from scripture, from the word. And, 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 and so when we do outreach, what do we do? We must reach out to people with the word of God. We don't do outreaches, gather people and, and, and then present the niceness of the church and give them the warm feeling of a community well, they will see the church is nice and they will feel the warm feeling and they walk away still in sin until we come and present to them the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture. And Paul said, that is the only way. And, and, and I'm glad that he opened the book of Romans of, of the gospel like that because, you know, unless we get through this point, we're not going to go very far after that because we're going to commit to learning the details of the gospel in the Word. Uh, let the Word explain to us what the gospel is. And, and, and if we are not convinced that this is God's way and this is God's power, we are not going to, to do very well uh, in, uh, in uh, learning ourselves or, or even using the scripture. Now... <coughs> Uh, uh, unless we, you know, we still find ourselves need uh, another point. I think I still want to make that. And so turn with me to uh, Luke 24. And Luke 24 is a story of Jesus after the resurrection, if you remember. And after the resurrection, uh, the two uh, disciples uh, went home from, uh, uh, from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And so he encountered them, and, uh, and uh, this is what he said to them uh, as they, they talked to him about the event in Jerusalem in verse 25. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these sins and then enter into glory? And beginning with Moses 
and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all scriptures concerning himself. So he said that, you know, what are you talking about? Why, why are you reasoning here and there? Why don't you turn to scripture and learn what it said? And, and he said he began from Moses to the prophets, meaning it's a long sermon. It's a long presentation. It's a detailed sermon. I don't know how long they're going to walk. Probably four hours. Uh, it's actually about, you know, six hours walk from, uh, from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And he said, this is all about me. And he began to show the gospel presentation of Christ. And, and yes, there are times when you present the word of God, people are going to yawn and people are going to leave and, people, and, and someday your Bible study group is going to be one or two. But you still have one or two rather than have a big crowd and nobody gets saved and nobody gets uh, ministered to because we use human uh, means rather than the, the ordained uh, channel that God has given for us to, to present the gospel and, 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 and live. So, so, so that's his, that's his important point. The gospel is, is in God's word. The gospel is uh, presented to us uh, in the scripture for us to learn the gospel, to live the gospel ourselves. And it is uh, the, 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 the gospel in God's word so that we can present to others to bring them to God by bringing them to the Word. <laughs> so um, he promised beforehand through his prophet in the Holy Scripture. And then the next point concerning his son. And that's the whole thing concerning his son. That's why the third point is the gospel is all about Jesus. The gospel is all about Jesus. So here's the gospel of God. The gospel of God is in the Word about his son Jesus Christ. And so that's the whole gospel uh, 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 presentation capture for us. What, what, what do we use? We use the word. What do we present? We present the Lord Jesus Christ, His Son. So, so number three, the gospel is all about Jesus. This is the heart of the gospel. The gospel is about God's Son. It is about Jesus. Uh, J.B. Philip uh, translation uh, uh, put it like this. The gospel is centered in God's Son. So that is very, uh, uh, very important because uh, the, the word concerning uh, or the word about uh, is the word, uh, word peri, which is the word perimeter. The word uh, perimeter is, is the word, you know, shown the, you know, the, the limits. And he said that the gospel is the perimeter and everything inside, everything inside is, uh, is Jesus Christ. Uh, so the gospel is the good news of God about or center in or focus at or on Jesus Christ, on his son. So I'll try to capture that. I say the gospel is all about Jesus Christ. And, and I want to emphasize the word all there uh, so, so that uh, it, it is the, the center uh, of the content. It is the center of the presentation. It is the, the object uh, of, uh, of the preaching. Uh, everything is concerning uh, Jesus Christ, but but the but the word peri here is uh, also does not only is uh, is the word about or the content is also the the word that communicate uh, the prefix for purpose. So the, the the purpose of the gospel is not only about Jesus Christ, but it is for Jesus Christ, meaning the. The, uh, the, 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 end, uh, pro the end game, if we say so, is, is not about man, but it's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning you present the gospel not, not only to save man, but, but for the glory of Jesus Christ, the, the glory of the Lord. The gospel is about Jesus. It's, 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 it's about Jesus in content. It's also about Jesus in purpose. Uh, and, and that is another uh, very important point to capture for us because uh, the way we present uh, the gospel now is, is that God so loved the world that he sent his only son uh, to die for us so that we can uh, enter to eternal life so that we can have blessing and everything is about us. God loved me, he sent his son for me and it's about me and at the end the gospel is me and God is just, uh, you know, the, the source of a blessing for me in order for, for me to live happily ever after. That's not the gospel. 
gospel is that God saved us for the glory of his son Jesus Christ. And, and the gospel is about Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ and salvation of man is about Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ. Yes, there's blessing for us uh, uh, as the redeemed uh, and uh, there's, uh, there's uh, 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 inheritance in heaven uh, given to us. That, that uh, is not in dispute. But the purpose is not for the gospel. The purpose is not to get us to heaven. The purpose is to get us into uh, a people loving Christ, worshiping Christ totally and completely now and eternally for the glory of Christ. So, so, uh, so that, that is uh, the, the focus uh, of, uh, of the word. And, 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 and so when we present, when we present uh, uh, the, the, the gospel, we have to be careful not to focus on the needs of man uh, as the primary uh, reason and, and the primary goal. And, and, and that is, uh, is the problem we see uh, today in, uh, in uh, a lot of uh, Christian circles, and that the, the needs of man become the platform and also become the focus of the teaching, preaching uh, of the Word. Um, I mean, we, we have made man the focus uh, of our presentation. Uh, here, uh, Paul is saying you have to make Christ this focus of presentation because that is how God uh, works uh, his salvation plan and that is how God works uh, the power in his word. You see that in, uh, in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And here Paul, <coughs> Paul knows about the expectation of the people. You know, he, he said that I, I, I know what people want. I know that, uh, that uh, the, uh, the Jews will seek signs and wonders. They will be impressed if I can show, you know, some miracles. If I can do some sign, we certainly will get their attention. Uh, I know the, the Greek or the Gentile is impressed with, uh, with the knowledge of wisdom. So if I can uh, do, you know, a persuasive speech, if I can uh, use uh, eloquence, if I can quote, uh, you know, a lot of learned men, uh, I will get their attention. But in verse, uh, in, uh, in chapter 2, this is what he said. And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God or the, or the gospel of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. He said that if you focus on man and try to persuade them to, to, uh, to let the gospel meet their needs, uh, and that they are the center, the, 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 the center of the message and of the, the plan of God, then they would respond. Yes, they certainly will respond. But the result is that, that you will persuade them on the power, or, or, or on the wisdom of man, meaning everything for the here and now, and everything going to go away. Uh, that, that, the, that the change that you see, or, or the response that, 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 uh, that, that you see in them, uh, and the satisfaction that you have, or the happiness that you have in their response is all temporary. Is everything uh, in the wisdom of man, and it will go away with this world. But the, but but if you present Christ and Christ crucified, if if you're talking about Christ and lead them to Christ and focus on Christ and, and Christ crucified, that it is a demonstration of the Spirit and of power, and that at the end their faith, uh, the faith of those who come uh, uh, to the truth, will not be. Uh, uh, based on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. Meaning God is working through this message and, and, uh, and this message uh, only uh, that, uh, that he will bring the power to bear and, uh, and accomplish his purpose. So it's not focused on man. It's not, it's not about man. It, it will affect man. It will uh, uh, touch man. It will deal with the problems of man, but it's not about man. Uh, I don't know if you are aware of that, but you know, there are 
there's a lot of, uh, of movement that based on men's uh, of you know meeting their needs, uh, doing a profile of what they want, uh, you know even what what kind of music they they like to hear, what, what kind of video that they watch, what kind of TV show that they about, and then you bring all of that into the presentation of the gospel so that men can find men can be comfortable. Uh, in the church and, and, and like the message and respond to the message. And they do. They come by the thousand and they come by the ten thousand. Uh, they flock you know, stadium uh, and hear about you know, uh, what God can bring, bring out the best of you. Uh, but everything's going to go away. And, 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 and the, the power of the gospel is not there. So, so again, it's about him. It's about His glory, it's about His kingdom, it's about His name, it's about His will, it's about His sovereignty, it's about His pleasure, His nature, His perfection, His love, His righteousness, His holiness, it's all about Him. And that is what we're going to discover in, in the book of Romans, it's, it's all about Jesus Christ in all these aspects of presentation, and that is, the, that is the power of God to save. That is the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. So, uh, let me make clear again. This life is not about us. So, God does not exist for us. We exist for Him. This life is not about us. It's about the King and about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, when we, when we are convinced that ourselves in the Word of God, and when we present that to the people, and God take them from where they are to where they should be in relationship to Christ, then there's a true encounter of the gospel of God happen. Now there, there, there is an example uh, of uh, all about Jesus Christ and, and, and living a life uh, all about Jesus Christ and, and doing all the presentation regarding Jesus Christ. And, and uh, the example uh, that Jesus said, there's a man who was born in uh, a woman and he is the greatest man. Uh, so if, if, if that's the case, we should look into his life and into his ministry and to see what he does that so qualify him to be the greatest man that was ever born. You know who that was? John the Baptist. Jesus said of all the, of all the uh, 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 per persons born of women, nobody is greater than John the Baptist. Uh, so why John the Baptist is, is the greatest? Uh, did he do a lot of miracles? Uh, did he heal a lot of people? Did he call the raise uh, men from the dead? Uh, did he uh, bring fire from heaven? None. He does none of those things. Well, one thing he does in John uh, ten forty one, it said John the Baptist performed no miracles, but everything he said about Jesus is true. And that's, that's a sum, summation of, uh, of, uh, of John's life and uh, of, uh, of, uh, of John's message. He, he, he performed no miracle. He, he was not a miracle man. Uh, he was not given that gift. Uh, that was not his function. But, his, uh, but everything he said about this man, about Jesus, is true. Now the life of John the Baptist is very interesting. He was separate out from birth uh, as a herald of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, you know, he, uh, he uh, was six months older uh, than Jesus uh, when, when, when the angels came and uh, gave Mary uh, the message that, uh, that she would be with child uh, by the Holy Spirit. Also gave the message that uh, Elizabeth, the cousin, also uh, is pregnant with John the Baptist. And, and John is separate out from, from uh, his mother womb to do one thing, and that is to prepare the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and so he prepared the way. He came out uh, in his life and he's, uh, he's functioned for about a year and a half. And then he was put to jail. And in jail he was beheaded uh, by the request of a dancing girl. So on, on the level of, uh, of human uh, achievement, his life is a lousy life. I mean, he accomplished little. And, you know, you go out to, to live a year and a half and you get locked up and you get chopped up, your head got chopped off. What's there to show? For all his life, he has one message. And that is, behold the Lamb of God. That's all he does. That's all he's sent to do. Behold the Lamb of God. Here's the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and, and, and that is his total ministry. Come see the Lamb of God. And the evaluation of, uh, of, of heaven is totally different than the evaluation of, of man. Man would, would look at his life and say it's a total failure. Jesus looked at his life and said he's the greatest. Because he accomplished the greatest thing. He pointed people to Jesus Christ. Of, of, all, of all the prophets that, that, that proclaimed Jesus Christ, nobody but John the Baptist identify the very person, Jesus Christ, by, by name and by sight. And, and so he has been given, uh, he was given the greatest privilege, and he was the herald of, uh, of Christ, and he said uh, uh, in his life that Christ must increase, I must decrease, uh, I, I must decrease, and, and everything is about the Lord Jesus Christ. So John understands something very important. The gospel of God is about his son, Jesus Christ. And, and he understands his ministry in total, come see the Lamb of God. And so that's, that's the point that, uh, that Paul, is, uh, Paul is making here in, 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 uh, in the introduction of Romans, that the gospel of God is given to us in the Holy Scripture, and it's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. So now we're going to go into the detail of, the, of Jesus Christ by what he's going to explain. What about Jesus Christ? He said concerning Jesus Christ, and he gave three points. Who was born of a descendant of David according to the flesh? Verse 4, who was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead according to the spirit of holiness? And then number three, Jesus Christ our Lord. So there are three things that you will see as an essence of the gospel uh, in your outline. And, and we encourage you to look at the outline or take some notes. Uh, it keeps you awake. It keeps you focused and, uh, and stay on track. Uh, I, I don't know. If, if you're a student, uh, you go to class, it's easier uh, to stay with the professor if you do something, right? If we say, turn the book, you turn the book. If we say, look at this, you do that, it takes some notes. If you just sit there, you very likely fall asleep in 10 minutes especially in this kind of learning uh, here as well. So, so it takes discipline to, to, uh, to engage in the Word as well. So I invite you to do that. Uh, so, so now let's talk about the essence of the Gospel. We, we talk about the message of the Gospel, and it's about it's God's message. It, it's in God's Word. It's all about Jesus Christ. And now the essence of the Gospel has three points. And uh, I aim to cover point number one today, if we, if we can. And that is, number one, is the gospel is about Jesus the man. About Jesus the man, the, humi uh, the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, the gospel is about Jesus the Son of God. And that is the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And number three, the gospel is about Jesus the Lord. It's about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So, so you can see that, uh, that the gospel that, that saved us and the gospel that saved man uh, 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 must be uh, presented, must be proclaimed in this way, and that is uh, all about Jesus Christ and about Jesus uh, in, in His humanity, about Jesus in His deity, and about the relationship we must have with Him as the Lord over us. So, so the, 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 outline, the outline of the gospel is given to us here concerning His Son, Concerning how, how do we present his son? Well, present him as the one who was born of descendant of David according to the flesh. Present him as the one who was declared the son of God by power, by the resurrection from the dead. Present him as Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> and, and, and so here is the distinctive uh, of, of the gospel. The gospel is about Jesus Christ, but it's about the doctrine of Jesus Christ. It's, a, it's, not about, uh, it's not about, you know, uh, Jesus loves you and helps you. Yes, but what kind of Jesus are you talking about? Uh, you know, is he just a source of blessing, meeting your needs? Uh, you know, instead of Buddha, you replace Jesus in that, and it's just a source of, of whatever you're looking for? No, it, it's a totally different orientation. It is, it is opening the heart to the truth. It's about Jesus Christ and about what? Tell him, uh, tell us about his son, and believe in what God tell us about his son and what he accomplished through his son, 
and that is when we uh, enter into the new birth by, his, by the power of the Holy Spirit and enter into relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, declare Him Lord and, and God in our, in our life. Now it's also in these three areas, uh, Jesus the man, Jesus the Son of God, and Jesus the Lord, where we find uh, deviation or, or uh, false teaching a lot. Uh, when we talk about other religion, you know, like Buddhism or Hindus or, 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 or other uh, um, faith uh, belief system, we can distinguish by whether they believe in Jesus Christ in this way or not. Jesus, the Man, the Son of God, the Lord, and we can can say, well, they are false religion right away. You know, if, if they worship somebody else not Jesus Christ, we know that they are not uh, the, the faith in God. But uh, the cults, uh, the cults like uh, Jehovah Witnesses, uh, Mormons, uh, Hare Krishna, Munis, uh, all those uh, cults, what are they wrong on? They're wrong on this one of these three things or all of these three things. They're wrong on the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, His humanity, or they are wrong on the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ and His deity, or they're wrong on the relationship with Christ as Lord uh, uh, over their, their lives. So, so, uh, <clears throat> so that is very important uh, the distinction that we must make. And, and all of that is on the authority of Scripture, like we said, uh, in the Holy Scripture. <clears throat> so, 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 so any belief system that is wrong on two things. Number one, on the authority of Scripture, and number two, wrong on the doctrine of Christ uh, in terms of salvation by grace, uh, th through faith uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ alone, then we know it is uh, the, the wrong faith or the uh, uh, cult. So it is essential for us to understand this. Um, let's embrace the first point, and that is, that is Jesus Christ the man. So, so, so Paul said, you know, when, when you uh, understand scripture uh, co concerning the gospel of God, you must understand these three, three points. And the first point being the humanity of Christ concerning his son who was born a descendant of David according to the flesh. Uh, so Paul, Paul begins with uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as a man. Uh, and obviously... It has a connection to the second point, Jesus as God, and uh, bring to the relationship as Jesus as Lord. But we start out with the humanity of Jesus. Uh, so he was truly a man. He was tru uh, uh, truly God, but uh, he was also truly a man. Uh, and uh, and here he was uh, he was uh, he was born uh, uh, of a descendant of David. So the, the word uh, the word born here is is, is very very interesting uh, here because uh, Paul is using uh, using uh, the, uh, the, the, the 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 word not like he was born as a beginning but he became uh, just, just like in uh, in John when John said the the word became flesh and dwelt among us so he said that uh, that here uh, that Jesus was a real man. Uh, and he was born, but he became man according to the descendant of David, uh, of the descendant of David, according to the flesh. Uh, so we can say that he was uh, was born in 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 the sense uh, in connection to the virgin birth. And so the doctrine of the virgin birth is very important in terms of the gospel, uh, because uh, uh, it present Christ. Uh, incarnation uh, become uh, truly a man, uh, but uh, tr uh, truly a man with uh, without sin, uh, with, uh, with without the sin nature, without the the uh, the sin from Adam, uh, and and uh, he's a true man in 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 term of God's requirement for sacrifice. Uh, Luke uh, story obviously. Uh, talk about Jesus uh, as as uh, as a man being born. But also, as he was raised up, he was raised up as a, as a very normal boy. Um, uh, just a few notes here. <laughs> in uh, in uh, Luke chapter two, verse uh, thirty-nine, 
He said that the child, meaning uh, Jesus Christ, grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And then in verse 52, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor of God and man. So, so when Jesus was born, we know that it's a, 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 a miraculous birth. It's a birth, uh, the virgin birth. We're going to uh, take the time to, to deal with that in a little bit here. Uh, but uh, in his growing up, he, he was growing up just like a normal boy. Uh, he was very human. He, he, he grew up in terms of his body, he's in terms of his wisdom, in terms uh, of relationship with others, uh, in, in, in terms of his... his uh, a relationship uh, to the work of God as well, and and so when we uh, when we talk about Jesus' humanity, humanity, it is also a mystery, because uh, on the one side he's very normal, uh, he was perfectly a normal uh, uh, human being. He was born a child, he grew up, uh, you know, a baby, and then you know a, a teen, and then a man, uh, just like uh, all of us. And then when we talk about him uh, as, as a man, we're talking about emotions, human emotions, uh, he, human reaction. And, and scripture is telling us he's fully a man in all aspects. Um, he was tired, uh, John 4 uh, verse 6, talking about when he was traveling to Samaria. Uh, by noontime he was so tired. Uh, in Matthew chapter 4 he was hungry uh, after the temptation of 40 days. I mean, anybody would be hungry after 40 days, right? Yeah. I'm probably just four hours will get me hungry already. And uh, on, on the cross, uh, he, he said, I thirst. Um, uh, by, by the grave of his friend Lazarus, uh, he cried. So he, he showed all the emotions uh, of, uh, of man, uh, all the human uh, reactions as well. Um, we see that all the time when we see him sleeping uh, uh, because he's so tired on the boat uh, in the middle of the storm. Um, uh, we see him eating with uh, his disciples, uh, talking to his disciples. And now for 30 years he lived, uh, he lived w within his family. They are so convinced that he is just a man because he's so human uh, that they have a hard time believing him as the son of God. Uh, that's even in John uh, 7 uh, uh, verse 5. So he was so human they had no idea that he was God in the flesh. But there's another aspect of, uh, of the presentation of the Lord Jesus Christ as human, as uh, born in the descendant, uh, according to the de descendant of David, and that, he, and that is he is historical. Uh, he, he, he has come into the world uh, and uh, make a difference in history. He was a real man in history. So we, we know that he was born in Bethlehem. He was born under Caesar uh, Augustus. Uh, when uh, uh, Cuneus was uh, governor of Syria, we, we have that in uh, Luke chapter 2. Uh, when, when Christ began his, uh, his ministry, uh, and that is marked by the ministry of John the Baptist. John the Baptist came out six months before him. So Luke uh, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, I think it's just interesting because uh, Luke uh, marked this down in history. He said this is the time when, when you start marking the, the ministry of John the Baptist. And when you mark the, the ministry of John the Baptist, in six months you mark the, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judah, Herod Tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip Tetrarch of Taconites, uh, during the high priest of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John. So he listed out who's in power, who's who in history, and he said that, that is the time when you can know uh, the, the Jesus Christ. Uh, so Jesus is the man of history. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the books outside of, of scripture, uh, secular book also wrote about him. Uh, so when we consult a history book like uh, um, uh, uh, Josephus uh, in the book uh, Antiquities of the Jews uh, recorded uh, the, uh, the time uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, I find that very interesting. This, let me just uh, read uh, you a quote from, from, uh, from him. This is uh, Josephus. He, he wrote Antiquity of the Jews uh, in uh, 90 AD. So, 
slightly before the book of Revelation. So he wrote, now there was at this time Jesus, a wise man. It would be lawful to call him a man. For he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was Christ. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of principal men among us, has condemned him to the cross, those that love him at the first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive again in the third day, as the divine prophets had foretold these, and ten thousand others wonderful things concerning him. And the tribe of Christians so named from him are now, are now not as thing at this day. And this is, this is, this is history. This is a uh, uh, very famous history, Josephus. Uh, in the book of Antiquities of the Jews. So they, they were written in, the, uh, in, in history of man, uh, the existence of Jesus Christ, with his work and his influence. Uh, so he's very real. He's, uh, he's real in history. And, and so what does that mean for us when we say Jesus is, uh, is historical, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a man of history? Uh, well, if, if, if he exists in history, uh, then we know everything that is written uh, concerning him is also real, that the cross was real. If the cross was real, then the, uh, the empty tomb was real, then the uh, ascension was real. Uh, then if the ascension was real, then he's coming back. That would be also real. So, so everything concerning Jesus Christ is biblical and historical. That brings us another application. When you present the Lord Jesus Christ, when you present the gospel, you present Jesus in the historical facts as well. A lot of the presentation of the gospel right now is based on personal experience. You know, uh, this is how I encounter the Lord and this is how, uh, you know, He's just changed me. And, and this is, uh, the, the, you know, since I've become a Christian, I go to church, my family is better. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm happier and uh, I'm more blessed. Yes, uh, there's a place for, for testimony as confirmation of, of God's truth. But if it is a foundation, then what, what do you do when people say, yeah, I agree. You know, since I became a Buddhist uh, and, and take on yoga and meditation, I feel peace. And, I, you know, I, I, I don't quarrel with my wife anymore. And, and so what do you do? If it's if it based on just, uh, just human experience and there's no authority one over the other. So you have to come back to the authority of Scripture as verified in history. And, and that is what, uh, what uh, Paul is referring to, who said that, concerning his son who was born a descendant of David according to the flesh. So, so the gospel is anchored in history. Uh, Jesus did live on the earth. He did die on the cross. He was buried. He did rise again. His tomb was empty. He did ascend to, to heaven. And, and, and this is history made certain by credible witnesses. Uh, it's just like, you know, we, we prove history in the court of law by credible witnesses. We prove uh, uh, the, the, uh, the historical facts of Jesus Christ by uh, credible witnesses just as the same. Uh, so so when, when, we, uh, when we talk about the gospel, we need to present the word of God. We need to uh, present Christ as a man, as, as uh, born by the virgin birth uh, into history. Uh, and we need to present uh, uh, him as, uh, as uh, man die on the cross by, uh, in history. Uh, and, and then also, uh, descendant of David, according to the flesh, is very important. Uh, <coughs> So, so let, let me just uh, say, say, say a few things about uh, the virgin birth of Christ. Now, do, do you, I turn to the person next to you and, uh, and say, do you believe in the virgin birth? Well, there, there are people who say, is that, is that really important if I just you know, believe in, in the Lord Jesus and, and have a good relationship with Him? Now, you, you, you cannot believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and exclude certain uh, biblical truth concerning Him. And the virgin birth is uh, essential to understanding uh, the uh, human nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like I said, uh, uh, Paul said that, uh, that according to uh, the, the, the flesh, and He was born a, 
a descendant of David. The word born was not the word, you know, born in terms of uh, uh, giving birth uh, or uh, being given birth, but it is the word become, uh, the, the, the words uh, to become. Uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's uh, similar to John 1.14. That the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, so here Jesus became man, but he did not uh, originate uh, at the birth uh, by Mary. He pre-existed uh, his uh, incarnation, and at the time in history he became man. And, 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 and that is uh, uh, given to us by the prophets. Um, Isaiah tells us that, uh, the, the, that the virgin will, will be uh, with child and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. That's in Isaiah 7, 14. Uh, Matthew 1, uh, 20 said that uh, uh, when the angels talk to the Joseph and say, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And Gabriel uh, told Mary in uh, Luke 1, 35, that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. The Holy One shall be called the Son of God. Uh, so this is, uh, this is uh, uh, to, to, to certify uh, that uh, Christ is born as a child, but it's not the normal birth. It is uh, the intervention of, the, uh, of God, uh, uh, Holy Spirit, into the process uh, so that... Uh, so that the, uh, the, the sin of Adam does not pass on uh, to, uh, to the, the Lord Jesus Christ in his humanity. Now it's not because, uh, because uh, you know, he was born uh, uh, without, the father, without human father, that he was uh, without uh, the original sin. Um, now people say, does it only pass on to the father and not pass on to the, the mother Mary? That's not the point. The point is that God has demonstrated that by the virgin birth, he has interfered, he has interrupted the, the normal process, and, and he has ensured uh, uh, the, uh, the, sinlessness, uh, the sinless nature of, uh, of, of his son, that he was born by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, uh, and, and so uh, the humanity of Jesus is the start out without sin, without the original sin. But then he also uh, lived a life of a, of a sinless man. He, uh, so his sinlessness is, uh, is important in terms of, uh, of um, number one, his holiness. But uh, in order to sacrifice for us, the righteousness uh, given to us is given uh, the righteousness of, of God uh, in his divine nature. But uh, the righteousness of a, of a perfect life is also given to us by the perfect life of the sinless Son, Jesus Christ. So the, the, the humanity of Christ, when we present that, we present the, the, the uh, virgin birth uh, as uh, the humanity without sin, and then we present Jesus Christ's uh, life without sin as the righteous life that is uh, given to us as substitute, uh, uh, um, replace our, our life before the Lord. So, Scripture tells us uh, about the sinlessness of Christ very clearly. Uh, let me just uh, point out a few things here. Uh, 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse, uh, uh, verse 21, saying that uh, Christ knew no sin. Uh, he, Hebrew chapter 4, uh, 15, uh, saying that he, in all respect, has been tempted like us, but without sin. Um, Hebrew uh, chapter 7, 20, uh, 26 says that he is holy, blameless, unstained, separated out from sinner, exalting, uh, uh, exalted above the heavens. Um, so over, over and over again, the, the testimony of scripture, as well as the testimony of his contemporaries, point out that he is without sin. You remember when we studied the, the trial of Jesus, you know, the human trials, the... the the Jewish trial, the, the Roman trials, all come to a conclusion that this man is, is no sinner. Uh, so, so, so the sinlessness of Christ is important. Now, last point here is uh, the descendant of David. That is his kingship. His, his, his kingship is important because, because that is uh, the qualification of the human um, Messiah 
that, uh, that came from God that will reign forever. Uh, so uh, so he, 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 he was born a man. He was born a man without sin. He was born the right man of the promise of God. Uh, he, 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 he is the Messiah of God, the, the promised one. Uh, so, so it is significant that uh, the, uh, the gospel of, 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 of God concerning Jesus Christ uh, uh, is uh, presented with the truth concerning his uh, humanity. Uh, because uh, in that, uh, give, give, give us uh, the uh, understanding as well as the conviction and the faith that is in him uh, that present uh, salvation for us. Uh, Hebrew chapter 2 verse uh, 14 uh, tell us uh, this connection. And it is uh, very important to, know, to note that, uh, that, that it is in this uh, connection that we have uh, uh, the help from the Lord Jesus Christ, the man. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too share in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become merciful and faithful priest in the service of God, and that he may make atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. So he must be a man in order to make atonement, uh, the sacrifice, uh, but he is also a man in order to understand our weaknesses and, and, uh, and be the, the high priest for us, uh, to, to be a help for us. And, and, and he become uh, a, a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God because he is a man perfect uh, through temptation and without sin. And then the scripture declare that, uh, that uh, no presentation of the gospel is without this fact, without this truth. First uh, John 3, First uh, John verse 4, uh, chapter 4 verse 2. Tell us that this is how you can recognize the Spirit of God, meaning the teaching that is from God. Every spirit or every teaching that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is from God. But every teaching that does not acknowledge Jesus is from God. This is the teaching from Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. So, so the point here is important. Any, any presentation of the gospel without the humanity of Christ as a perfect man sent by God into the world uh, to die for man's sin uh, is not the gospel, is not true gospel. So it's not enough to say God loves you. It's not enough to say Christ loves you too and you know, be, uh, join the church and, and, and then we'll, we'll be blessed. Uh, it is the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture concerning his son and the first part of that is that Jesus the perfect man from God so you say well it's all theology man it's a lot of theology and it's true and it is the theology the truth concerning Christ that save us it is not the warm feeling is 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 not the you know the emotion that that will come later on. That will come as we resp respond to him uh, in faith and in worship. But it is the truth concerning Jesus Christ. And when we put our faith in th that truth, that's when we are safe. But it's also when we present the truth of Jesus Christ and men by the power of God and the grace of God put their trust in that, faith, in that truth, they will be safe. And so it's uh, absolutely important for us to again acknowledge it is in Scripture, it is about Christ, it is about the doctrine of Christ. So how do you like doctrine? Well, let's all stand and, and pray that, uh, that, uh, that we will be captured by the truth of God. Just, just, just uh, give the word of thanks to God, what you have learned and what He has uh, brought to your attention. And, uh, and have uh, given you a connection again to the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> then after that, we'll worship Him.